Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is the one, the only, the Azathan. We are back with another episode of Lord on the Formath 0.31. Please go check it out on brigandshaven.net. Thank you to Marshmallow for creating this map. Savinus and Wooden Plank for your help. Go check out Harold on YouTube if you want to see awesome content. But, uh, you know, also come to our channel too because, well, we're good. <laughs> Frostwolf, what's up, baby? Hello and welcome. Good morning, brah. Oh, I've already got my uh, my blanket fortress prepped. We will not be cold this day. All right, now for those of you who may not know, Lord on the Formath is a Warcraft Three custom that set. Just before the events of the Third War, 12 players will take over control of many of the factions involved in these events. And on two teams, starting out at least, they will try to fight for Azeroth. Good and evil will clash, and as events happen and things play out and become more complicated, well, more options will open up. Further factions will become available. And alliances that once seemed so strong will crumble before the might of this shirt is very... I'm, just, I'm sure you can hear me just rustling around over here like fucking... Jesus, I'm 12 years old. Alright. Let's go ahead and introduce our players to this game. We have Baytran70 playing as the Dragon Maw Clan. We have Neferin in the light blue trunks. He's going to be curling the forces of the Light's Hope. Dark Sun 10 or 110, he's going to be called to the dam. He's starting off, at least in this version, in Death Knell. Lucky him, one of the better starting points. It is randomized for how he... One of three points. Samok in the green trunks for the Alliance. He's going to be controlling the Ranger Corps. And in the other green trunks, we have the Shadow Council helping the evil team. Terran Gorfin and Grandmaster Vorpil will lead them there. Teal Dragon. Now you're going to notice that the Alliance starts out at a disadvantage here. I want to point out this is not our usual like, oh my god, look how good this game is. This game is going to be a little bit... Hmm. Interesting. We'll go ahead and call it. Anywho, continuing on, Teal Dragon in the orange trunks, he's going to be working for the Horde evil team. Uh, he's going to be the Dark Horde, controlling Ren Blackhand and Kargath Bladefist, of course. Now, Ren Blackhand is outside in the real world trying to help alongside the Dragonmaw clan while Kargath and the rest of his folks from Hellfire Citadel are still stuck in Outland. With the help of Terran Gorfine, they'll be able to open the portal, but not before they go ahead and destroy their hated enemy, the Draenei. Now, we don't know if Neferin is any good. Hopefully he'll put up some kind of a decent defense there, and oops, well, I guess we're going to be zoomed in for a little bit until it auto-zooms back out. Well, Wattish, I do apologize for this inconvenience, but... It also looks hella goddamn cool. Alright, so... It looks like Blue's going to build up now. Lordaeron, Dark Green player, unfortunately, he is gone. Meaning that the Cult of the Damned isn't going to be under much direct pressure. And we don't know what OJ is going to suffer. Teal Dragon, my guess, is... Uh, I wonder how these are going to hold up. Some of these custom models. I mean, this Lordaeron Captain looks pretty decent next to the other guys. In fact, much better. But next to the new models, he's going to look kind of garbage. Anywho, continuing on with our introductions, we have Sapphires in the Yellow Trunks. He'll be controlling the Dwarves, the first bastion of hope against the forces that will be streaming out of the Dark Portal here at Dunall Gas Station. He'll meet them head on. Sapphires will be using Falstad Wildhammer and Magni Bronzebeard to fend off his opponents. Now, dwarves are a very interesting race, as any race can actually focus on melee or range. Some are better than others. For example, Shadow Council, absolutely. Dwarves, why wouldn't you get all of the siege they let you have? They let you have siege engines and mortar teams, and when you go Dark Iron, it gets even crazier with another set of siege added in for fun. Good evening, Nerzulin and Silva and everyone else. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Okay, so Baytran's going to be moving... <laughs> Sorry, we haven't finished introducing Kelmorth in the Purple Trunks for the good team. He'll be the first to assault the undead. Looks like he runs in a little bit too quickly and might end up losing Jaina for it. No! Jaina, please, get out. Jeez, her own... Aunt loses Antonitis, however. That sucks. Keeps Jaina barely somehow getting out of her own Left for Dead situation. Anywho, I was going to say he has Jaina and Antonitis, but he just has Jaina. Zaz, or Zaj, alright, Zajirba, 
and the Teal Trunks will be controlling the Legion's forces. Their job is to utilize Archimonde and his devastating Legion and Demonic forces to assist and confuse and confound the Alliance. Now we can see somebody is, con I mean, Nephrim is making uh, units. I kind of want to go back and check on him, but let's finish the introductions. Born in the Blue Trunks, he will be controlling our Lich King forces. He starts off in Northrend with the job of subjugating the forces that exist there currently. Now, it's important for him to grab as much of these creeps and creep gold as he can. He can choose which ones he wants to mind control, etc., blah, blah, blah. But he's going straight into the dungeons here, taking out the Deathbringers, the Storm Giants, anything that's worth a lot of gold. And this is the ver this is exactly how you should play this. Ugh, does it feel like it's at a weird angle for anyone else or just me? Okay, maybe it I got used to being zoomed in very ever so briefly. And finally, we have Vil76. He will be our High Elven player. Looks like he'll try to do what he can to control the forces of Dark Green and join in at least barricading the Call to the Damned off for now. Let's go ahead and see how Neferin does against ooh, the Legion forces. Sorry, it's just the sound effects are so loud. <clears throat> I mean, they are devastatingly loud. Okay, Yusuf, take care. Hope you'll get to join us later. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Luxmane, for following. Uh, I don't know why it didn't acknowledge that. Hold on. There we go. Okay. Thank you very much, man. Pleasure to have you here. Alright, so... I guess I could talk about what's going well and what isn't going well. I like the fact that Neferin is starting to utilize these Mana Forge Charged Crystals. You want to use these. Now what they do is they put up a shield that makes any allied unit within them invulnerable. Now, yes, you should have a big chunk of your ranged units sitting here and here and then like running around with your melee at this point in between the two, utilizing Maru who has devastating AoE abilities. Now, I like the fact that Zaj clearly knows what he's doing. He's mana draining the crap out of Maru, making sure that he's not going to have Muru, Maru. He's not going to have the mana to cast those scary spells or get the units out in the first place. Now, Neferin, have you lost your hero yet? Yes, he did. Or he already teleported out. Doesn't look like these are controlled by him anymore. Eh, maybe it is. Ugh. These can also summon elementals, and they're very good. Unfortunately, it seems like Neferin, I'm not even good at the defending this base, so I don't blame him. It's very hectic when you're being attacked by three players as one player. Even with all the tools you have there, it's difficult to pay attention. Now, Dragon Maw Clan's going to be staging outside of Yellow's base. Sapphire's, he's an old name. I've seen him before. All right. Looks like Samox decided to leave the game. Are you kidding me? Hold on. I swear to you, I'm gonna mock this person right now. I'm sorry, I have to mock the person who sent this, because yes, you should send me replays. But I want to point out how they put this replay into, right? They put, it, the game name is I Won. <laughs> Never mind, let's just watch. <laughs> Alright, what I meant to say is the Ranger Corps has decided to leave the game. And that means the Alliance is down another player. They don't have their Ranger Corps player, they do not have their Lordaeron player. The evil team is, I believe, at full strength. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, six. Alright, a valiant attempt to take out the Cult of the Damned Plague right here. And I like that Zanj is using the teleport abilities on his Nethrazim to teleport to the hotspots to try to help out. The towering up of these early game bases, as you can see, is, well, it's important. You want to force the Alliance to lose units and drop corpses, and then your casters back here continually uh, support that. Now, Dark Sun, let's go ahead and see where he's at upgrades-wise. He has not upgraded his dam damned mages, which is a terrible decision, as they eventually can drop plague cauldrons that spawn zombies that you can continually send in waves at your... You literally just spawn 12 of these cauldrons, hotkey them down to a spot, and just watch as, let's see, they spawn four each, so, is that 48? 48 zombies <laughs> just slowly march towards your opponents, dropping plagues and dropping corpses for then your necromancers to go ahead and raise again. I think that Gray might be a little bit new. He's not utilizing his uh, money to upgrade his casters. 
He seems a little bit flabbergasted, but he knew to tower up, so he's not the newest boy. And the Ranger Corps loses their base down south next to the Dwarves. The Dwarves are going to have a heck of a job trying to defend against what's coming out of the Evil Porter right now. Neferin didn't slow him down much at all, and now comes the real challenge. Lorthamar Theron getting healed, and I like the number of siege units, however, as you can see, the Alliance is blocking themselves back here. You have to make sure you open up these lanes so that your reinforcements can get in. The nature of these maps means that there's a lot of units moving on, and that positioning is often the most important factor when it comes to deciding who's going to win a duel or a fight. You will be amazed how often it just comes down to, wow, I, don't, I didn't know you could block half your army in a choke point with your own siege, so you couldn't, ah, yeah, that's awesome, man, let them take you piecemeal. And you're like, you had the advantage! <gasps> and it just, it's, it's, it can be frustrating. Good afternoon, Reigns. Pleasure to have you here. How well, Silva? Alright, now, Ghoul's being created for lumber production up north by our Dark Sun player. Uh, I think he knows this is lost. Hopefully he got Kel'Thuzad back out. Now, there's a spell on Kel'Thuzad that teleports you back to Northrend. He will now take Kel'Thuzad all the way to the mountains of Northrend and find the old forgotten citadel of Noxoramus. He will raise it! from the ground and use it as a mobile bastion of strength to attack his enemies from. It's a very powerful fortress, but remember the inner heart of Noxramus is easy to aim down. So if you drop in an enemy's base and somebody gets cheeky, you could end up with a squad of knights just aiming your core, which only has about a thousand health, you know. Fifteen thousand on the outside, one thousand on the inside, seems fair. And I'm wondering how quickly the horde is going to get outside. They've already opened the dark portal, right? Fanatic Kitty? Hey, oh, okay, yes, they are out and about when I used to go out. Yellow's getting ready to try to defend against this. He has the support of Vil76. This is rough. I can't believe you put this as, we won, the Alliance complained for an hour. Dude, they are, it is two to, it is four to six right now. <laughs> uh, and Grey lost. 4 to 6, gray loss. Two of the players that are supposed to be fighting gray are the ones who dropped. <laughs> Let's see how the south does. Now, usually, this is about all the dwarves would have to help, is the forces of the high elves. He'll want to protect the Dunalgaz cannon, the dwarven siege cannon placed on top of every dwarven base that looks like this around the map. Now, its equivalent is over here in the Dragon Maw base, base looking like the Dragon Maw's breath cannon. She is a little bit farther shooting, a little bit more damage dealing, but however, the dwarves get two of them. This cannon is the linchpin to defending this against four... It could be three to four legion armies. It's got what? Dark Horde, Cults of the Dam... Sorry, Dark Horde, Shadow Council, Legion, and Dragon Maw about to fall in this, so it's 2v4 in the south. Let's see how they do. Dragon Maw's moving around up north. I like the fact that Shadow Council is prepping himself to move around to the left here. Moving west to flank the forces, ensuring that the Dwarves of Donalgaz won't be able to retreat if they attack from three angles. I mean, that really is all three angles, right? Here, here, and here. It's kind of over. But, the Skybreaker has been created. You gain this unit by taking over Nomragon with your units in the beginning of the game, and then producing it for 300 gold. It's not a cheap unit, but it is a decisively powerful unit that can change how the battle plays out. It can summon air units to help with it. It has an AoE attack. It's a bastion of fortified armor in the air. And it can drop rockets on the ground. It's really good. Also, it acts as a transport. You can put your uh, command units in there. <laughs> But if you lose it, it's gone forever. Welcome, Julian Reno. Thanks for joining us, buddy. Okay, and the first fights are about to start kicking off. Let's go ahead and check on armors. We have two two upgrades from Sapphires. That means he's devoted quite a bit of um, uh, money, not into units, which uh, this is about the equivalent of two to three full groups of units not being made. Now, one three from our orange player, Teal Dragon, and he has his Felsworn. If he upgrades his Felsworn, they'll be able to summon these units that will also have the armor upgrade. But most importantly, his Blackrock Champions and his regular frontline units are going to have this three armor upgrade with uh oh my god increased armor it's got devotion aura and resistant aura putting it at seven 18.5 armor this early in the game 
53% damage reduction. The dwarves are going to have a hard time breaking through that, even if their cannon does damage. Now, the cannon is affected by upgrades, as you can see, so keep that in mind when you're deciding what you want to do. A little bit of harassment going on. Felstad Wildhammer trying to clash with the Dragonmaw clan, but the Dragonmaw is bringing in their own air units. Now, the Black Drakes were left at base, but now that they have a bead on where Felstad is, they don't have to worry about Felstad aiming down Dragonmaw's breath cannon. So here goes the fight. Uh, Gul'dan Skull being used to drop a rain of fire right in this choke point here. I like it. This is an unfortunate positioning for the dwarves because their siege engines and their siege are actually blocking off their allies. This looks like a very bad place to fight. They should be inside the choke point, but let's see how it plays out for them as the fight goes on. Batches of ranged units. I mean, Yellow has the advantage as long as he remembers to make sure his siege are targeting down these casters in the back. Let's go ahead and keep an eye on the health. I like that AoE heal from Yellow's uh, Anisterian Sunstrider using, or no, that's not Anisterian, that's actually Lorthamar Theron casting what is essentially Healing Spray. And all the Dwarven Bears get slowed down and dragged out, and look, there's the Shadow Council with the flank through the left, they take out the Dwarven Guard Tower, and now the Dwarves are pressed into the base. Is the Dragonmaw Clan coming in too? They're killing off Dunmodur. Dunmore, oh, Baytran, you should just ignore that and be here, but I mean, I think your allies will win anyway since there's no alliance here to help, you know? Um, <laughs> since a third of them are gone. <laughs> but they're still trying, and here, yes, here comes Dalaran! Finally, Dalaran's gonna be teleporting in. I think, yes, Dalaran? All right, the dwarves have been pushed back. Now this is kind of cool. It's very rare that we get to see the horde break through so successfully, so quickly, and I still think they're about to lose, though. Reinforcements being created from these back lines here are going to start to cause issues. And now that the Alliance is in a good spot, unless the Horde is smart enough to focus their siege very specifically on that middle batch of units and force Purple to pay for being in there, and there's Brown Baytran, that's what I was saying, boys, skip it and go. Here comes Bay with the flank. Necros Skullcrusher in the front, taking down units, and let's go ahead and see. The dwarves have managed to push back on this front. Whoa! Legion leaving at a terrible time just as Brown comes in. A little bit of poor communication going on. Looks like the 3v4 will be enough to hold against the Legion right now. However, no, Baytran's got more units coming in from the flank. I hope Legion's coming in. Not great timing, Brown says Teal Dragon. It's great timing. Brown's got enough units to make this work if you guys keep pushing with him. He absolutely does. You guys just have to get into other openings. God, they coming through so few choke points. Now, what the evil team could be doing to aid themselves right now is actually just control selecting these units in the choke points and clicking further into the base. Just getting out, filing, stopping this choke point from hurting. It looks like they may in fact be doing that. And this is one of the reasons why the Alliance doesn't want to fight too far back here is because it gets rid of the advantage of these three weird little choke points. Now, I love the sneaky exit that the Blood Elves, or the High Elves just pulled. Dalaran's still on the base like, oh, I thought we were fighting. Dwarves and Elves just dipped. So Sleepy Sleep, but really managed to make this Philly feel epic. <laughs> yeah, Sleepy Sleep, I'm telling you, this is so intense. Now, I like the fact that the Siege units from Teal have been in constant uh, use this whole game. However, he does need to be focusing down. Ooh, all right, Dalaran completely undefended now is open to the depredations of the Horde. There uh, is kind of a two-angle flank, though. And Neferin is about to arrive with his units. All right, come on, boys. B, Teal Dragon saying, get back. There we go. The other alliance have just managed to come in. We have Far Striders. I like that Light Blue has decided to utilize at least some of the Far Striders. He figures, why not, right? If they're there, I might as well add them into my army. And that's kind of badass. Yeah, Azo's gotten far better at these shoutcasts. Makes it like 20 in his belt now. Aw, oh, thanks, Rain. We're trying to get better. <clears throat> <laughs> now, the Alliance is actually making a valiant comeback. However, the plague is still in the back pocket. Now, let's not forget. While the Alliance may be happy right now, 
The undead still exist, and it looks like the first attack of many has been launched on the AFK player. They'll be taking the island Boralus along with its complement of extremely useful... Oh, I was going to say creeps. There's a lot of creeps around this island that you can take that are useful for picking up good experience, and I think a few might even drop an item. So, where's the cult, though? Dark Sun, inside Noxramus, of course, but the question then becomes, where is Noxramus floating to? It's hard to find him on the map. He's got this little base. Now, this is the inside of Noxramus, if you're wondering. It's got four little quadrants. They tried to make it nice, right? A little plague, a little pillage, a little, little death and decay, a little blood, little spiders. I don't actually know where the spiders are. But this base only has the heart of Noxramus with 1,500 health. If you drop the base down, Enemy units and your own can filter in and out of this teleport. I'm just waiting for something on the map to look like it's showing up. Is it here? Or did he float down? Oh, he's building the crypt. What does that mean? Does that mean Noxramus is floating nearby? Alright, we'll go back down south. The Dark Horde has long been on the retreat. And the Alliance will attempt to rebuild. Oh my goodness! The Dwarven Siege Cannon survives with only 300... Oh! Look at this! Constructionists surrounding the Dwarven Siege Cannon will be able to slowly heal it. They can heal buildings, and it's... Oh, yes, purple, you're amazing! Kalmorth, no, come on, realize what your units are doing. Leave them there. Let them heal. Let them heal that thing. It's beautiful, and I love you, and you should do more of what you're doing. Uh, the Horde is not going to be deterred for long. <laughs> I like this tiny little Great Hall being set up for what appears to be one of the most paltry lumber operations ever, but it makes the world feel more lived in, you know? It's like, oh look, we've got a beautiful little town here, and oh Jesus. Well, hello there. How are you doing? You're a big girl. Oh no, and there goes the plague. Not the Plague Ringer has been spawned, and with the creation of the plague, Anderhall will suffer a series of attacks. Blue is probably getting ready to land on the shores, and several undead bases will be spawned. The Legion, in addition, will have the option on Malganus. Yes. <coughs> Tychondrius or Deathrock. I feel like that's a hero we already lost. One of the two is going to be able to launch his own personal little campaign against the humans, which will end up Arcing its way across here, attacking Stratholm, launching an undead plague in Stratholm, and potentially turning it into a base for the Cult of the Damp. Now let's go ahead and check in on Boren's heroes. He's in Boralus still. Why was the plague launched if Blue wasn't ready to go? This is a weird team. Teal Dragon has the right idea. When the plague is launched is the correct time to attack the doors because the majority of the Alliance is going to be running home to go attack. Bastards, says Born. Why are they bastards? It's 4v6. Why why do you guys have like this hate boner for a team that has a stream disadvantage? Oh my god, just leave one of your guys back there, purple. Just one to repair that Dwarven Siege Cannon endlessly. That thing is, again, the linchpin to this defense. Now, Anderhall quickly falling to the forces of the undead now becomes a bastion for the Lich King. He gains just a few units and a few buildings. The first target for them, however, is going to be Lordaeron City. I don't see any arcane structures built here or any defensive. I don't think the Alliance has really been considering. They haven't had time to consider what comes next. You know what I'm saying? It's just been constant death. Based on the Warcraft 3 campaign. Of course, Sleepy. Now, it's Warcraft 3 campaign through to stuff like Deathwing, I want to point out. So... If you're wondering, oh, so this is just like kind of, I want to point out, we've got Yog saron sitting here as part of an event. We have Deathwing. We have the Forces of the Dark Eye <laughs> and Ragnaros. We have so much that is as of yet to happen, so don't worry, buddy. Hang in there, and there's more to happen. I mean, come on, we got the Undercity. This thing hasn't even been discovered yet. <laughs> Seriously, Brown said, uh, oh, God. OJ seems upset with Brown for some reason. Is it because Brown's not attacking? Should I come in? Oh my god, Baytred. Are you just trolling people now? I think he is. <laughs> yeah! Oh my god. You see your allies fighting. Yes, you should be fighting, Baytred. Please. It's like a mix of real lore, but also future lore and alternative histories. Yes, uh, also things like the Scarlet Crusade and their bastion of the Scarlet Onslaught that can spawn later if Uther is killed. The Lich King could be murdered, and the undead end up working as the Nerubians exclusively. 
all kinds of weird alternate history stuff. Now, we'll play one of these games after we've shoutcasted it today so that everyone will be able to join in and try to have some fun as well. These games are ridiculous, and as you can see, Sometimes these battles can feel overwhelming. You might look at something like this and ask, what are the significant parts that I want to be paying attention to? And I'll tell you the first thing that grabs all my attention, right? I see Siege. I see the two big groups of Siege. For Yellow, it's kind of weirdly near the front and his Skybreaker. But if I was fighting the, the Legion, I would notice that it's all right here. I would want somehow to do a workaround with my flying units, maybe Thalstad, try to take those down. The next thing I see as Legion as my biggest threat is going to be these Arcane Shield Generators. They slow and stun and kind of purge every single evil unit nearby them every second, resulting in so much lost DPS, speed, everything. It's one of the only things that allows the Alliance to hold on. Now, if Legion can use their heroes to finger of death these. They could utilize their siege units to take these down. Um, they also have the advantage if they could bring their siege forward. The alliance is extremely clumped up at the moment and hitting that would be one of the most important things they could do. Or taking down the cannon. Those are the three big things I can see. Hit them with your siege, take out these arcane generators, finish the cannon. Keep your siege alive. That's what Demon needs to do to win this right now. I like Vorpal using his staff to project an AoE invulnerability aura for a brief period of time, but he decides quickly to get the hell out of there. You look at him, just ignoring it. No one ever notices these arcane shield generators just wreck and shop every game. Look at this! Everything's slowed, stunned, they're taking out your siege, they're doing damage. Oh! Oh! God, there's no more destructive thing the Alliance could be doing than just allowing Kelmorth. You have done all your work and more, my friend. I talk shit about leaving. You're amazing. Nefarian stirs. Oh my god. The Prince of the Dra Bla Black Dragonflight. After reaching a certain level as the Dark Horde, you are able to research Nefarian and summon him occasionally as an extremely powerful area boss. It won't be enough, but it is always cool to see him flying above. Looks a lot like Deathwing, doesn't he? Alright, so we've got Nefarian versus the Skybreaker. Come on, Nefarian, you gotta leave. <laughs> they try to stun him, but he still manages to get out. Alright, Teal is rebuffed, however. The dwarves lost their cannon. There's really no more point in defending this. They should retreat back across the valley into Iron Forge itself where there is a plethora of defenses and a very hard to take base. If you can defend the gates of Iron Forge, 10,000 health on those. The only problem is once you go back... Oh no! Alright, so the Undead immediately destroyed Lord on Capital. Blue showed up and just, I mean, no one was there. So, that's that's how that went down. Yeah, that's how I've practiced. Love playing it solo, says Patreon. Yeah, no, playing these maps solo can absolutely be a blast for a lot of people. I think it's underrated how fun it can be to just go into a game, walk around the world, and just see if you can get all your races quests. Now, it is true that some quests and some results and some alliances require the other person to accept an alliance that you propose, but this version specifically has a mode where you can control everyone. If you just go in as player red, and this is actually a good point that everyone should be aware of, because it makes it kind of fun. If you go in as player red all by yourself, I've done this, I think it'll still do it where you just become, it's called like testing mode, and you can control everything on the map, you can make them fight each other, you can do all kinds of stuff. It's ridiculous what you can do. Now you can control them, but they're still unallied to each other, you know? It's really weird. Nefarian is one of Deathwing's children. Yes, true, Silva, but he wouldn't have all, like, the metal plates and, and, you know, the obsidian jaw and whatnot. Thank you, Sneaky Shamans, for the follow. I really appreciate that. Hello and welcome to the stream, buddy. It's a pleasure to have you joining us today. Alright, do we win that fight? No. <laughs> Patron's so confused, but distracting all of them did a lot. That's true. It has done a lot. You know, now that you guys are 6v4, it seems like you guys are doing pretty well. Now, with the death of Lordaeron, the Argent Crusade has been established. The Argent Crusade is... Oh, what the figgledy fucks just happened? How many people dropped? Wait, I'm confused. It's like only evil. 
now. I mean, it's literally just light blue. Has everyone else left? Yeah. I mean, Evil still has six players, which is great. Please tell me he's not going to be like, the Alliance kept whining for an hour. There's only one Alliance left. We're 24 minutes in the game, and as far as I can tell, there's legitimately one Alliance player left. Kelmorth, are you here? No, he's here. Hold on. So, no, no, sorry. Kelmorth is here. I'm an idiot. I'm talking out of my butt. There's two Alliance players and five Horde. Who did the Horde lose? They lost their green. Alright. So I'm sorry. My bad. It's 5v2 now. It's 5 versus 2. <laughs> Kalimdor still unfinished? Well, Gearsack, there's actually a game called Kalimdor the Aftermath. It's a game very similar to this, which there's Lorder on the Aftermath, Kalimdor the Aftermath, and then there's Lorder on the Formath. Now, the two Aftermath maps clearly take place after the events they're about specifically the scarlet crusade and things like that you you know things a lot's already done all right noxram is floating into this base now they're trying to defend margin hold keep and this is actually kind of a badass hold um if you're wondering exactly what's happening our gray player was dropping a lot of those plague cauldrons and attempting to spawn units but right now purple is brilliantly making sure that he's dispelling constantly with his priests using they have dalaran runes which heal units conjure health stones heal aoe and then dispel magic very good unit and he's constantly casting dispel to get rid of this now i get it's not enough Noxtrum has just floated right by, like, not my problem, bro. Uh, and Blue's coming through the mountains now. Where's Light Blue? Neferin, I, I know you're going through a lot right now, but you've got to go help your ally. It's literally right outside your door, man. I mean, are you going to go help your ally at all? This is pretty rough. <laughs> yeah, Sneaky Shamans, it's a really fun game. Now, again, it can look extremely overwhelming. Gray should be going for zone dispels right now because Kelmorth is utilizing arcane elementals as sort of a squish wall here to protect his backline units. We can also see spell steel snatching up a lot of those anti magic shells that Gray was enjoying. All right, so now it's time with a fully upgraded Noxramus to utilize its special ability. It can spawn several frost worms. Maybe dropping it closer would have been a better idea, but I guess they'll still harass a bit. Uh-oh, and losing Stonesmine is a 100% guaranteed way to never be able to resurrect him again. Oh, that's kind of a bummer. Gray, what is going on here? And he's like, I've got to go! I just lost my unit! Now, Stonespine is a hero that can be created after you collect three pieces, monster shards spread throughout the world. They're pretty easy to get as Gray. One's inside Noxramus, one's inside a base right next to you, and one's inside the base you spawn in. So it's not too hard, but once you get that, you can create a single hero, either a giant, <laughs> what is it, it's Patchwork, yeah, Patchwork the Abomination, or, which is a giant tank, of course, or this Flying Stonespine character, which is a great hero-aiming character. Dwarves are still alive, but I think they left. Yeah, Sapphire's gone, Vil's gone, it's just light blue and purple at this point. I mean, we have to fast forward a bit, right? I mean, purple... It's doing a good job holding off evil. Light Blue is going to try to hang on to Stratholm as long as he can. Teal still hasn't launched his optional crusade against the Alliance. What is this? Oh, Sungo. Sungo together this time. Uh, You do know that they're all AFK, right? They all left. Does he know that? I don't think he knows that. Sneaky says, I've been playing a lot of Legion Tower Defense and trying to do... TBR. What's TBR? Prefer custom games far over regular melee. Ugh, shred that harpsichord, says Sleepy Sleep. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, let's slow this down and make this the epic battle that it deserves to be. Dalaran is making one of its last stands here. Actually, might not be a last stand if you can back up just a little bit and let Light Blue do some of the tanking on the front line. He's doing a great job. Kelmorth creating his Dalaran engines here, Uther the Lightbringer on the front line with his Paladins trying to get into this fight. It's a good choke point, and with so many Arcane Elementals on the front line, Blue's not hitting many actual mages. Uh, the idea is to just bog him down with Arcane... Those Arcane structures we were talking about? Ugh, well, I can't remember what they're called right now. Yeah, those guys aren't even there, buddy. Congratulations. Uh, arcane Shield Generators. And he forces Blue back! What?! 
Oh, and down south they're gonna be like, man, yellow still so hard. Look how many units there are here. All right, focus it down, guys. Take out the Skybreaker. We're doing it. They can't stand against us now when they're not here, but they can't stand against us now. Teal says, I'm glad I get Terran Gorfine. Yeah, when that hero, uh, when Green leaves, they do split up the heroes a bit. Terran Gorfine goes to OJ, which allows him a roster of five potential heroes. Magtheridon, Voon, Kargath, Bladefist, Ren Blackhand, and Terran Gorfine. Which is kind of like a really cool cadre of badass original orcs, and then just a demon and a troll hanging out. Like, yeah, man, it's pretty messed up. Now this has gotten even worse for Blue, because Bourne has backed up, allowing Kelmorth to put more of his arcane elementals on the front line, and Blue seems completely uninterested. See, this is the kind of shit that drives me nuts. Bourne has a full group of meat wagons, right? And Purple's got a full group of units that probably don't do well against meat wagons, right? But instead of utilizing those, he's just gonna, like, shoot on the front line at some paladins, and the splash is gonna hit his own units. I, I mean, control your siege, boys. It's it's an RTS 101. Get that siege under control. This is unacceptable. You're not children. The Black Road RPG. Oh, I've heard about that. Oops, wrong face. <laughs> oh, okay, I was... <laughs> Please tell me Evil Civil Wars. At the end, yes. This, okay. Now, Baytran, I'm gonna pause this so we can yell at you for a minute. What do you mean, at the end? You mean we have another 20 minutes of five of you guys fighting two people before you decide civil war <laughs> I'm really afraid after this ass whooping right here I'm gonna have to pause the gate we're gonna make this a two-parter I'm not even sure it deserves to be a two-parter I might just cut this down to a one-parter where it's just like we're gonna Benny Hill music going over the sound of you guys just killing AFK players and celebrating we're not gonna civil war today because we're a bunch of assholes and we can't get out of our uh... sorry what I meant to say is um <laughs> thank you for submitting the replay <laughs> the fuck just heal brb what do you mean brb all right we're gonna call this part one thank you for joining us ladies and gentlemen this has been the one the only the as it then we'll be back with part two immediately for those of you on twitch and those of you on youtube you'll have to wait i don't know probably a half hour bye guys